Let's learn how to make ancient tools. I'm actually going to go back on what I said a minute ago. We're not actually going to make these ancient tools because what we're talking about today is a process called flint napping. And flint napping is very, very dangerous. So please do not try to do this on your own, especially not at first. If you're going to do it, make sure that you're in the presence of somebody who knows what they're doing. They will keep you safe. Flint napping is the process of shaping stones into tools, generally blades, by reducing them hitting one stone on top of another to make pieces flake off. This is part of the reason that it's so dangerous. A lot of the time, legs and knees are used to brace the stone that's being broken into pieces. One wrong move could send your hammer stone flying into your knee, sending a lot of force into it, breaking the bone. Alternately, one of the flake pieces that comes off could go flying into your skin, causing some very serious cuts. Now, what exactly is the hammer stone that I just mentioned? The hammer stone is exactly what it sounds like. It's the stone that's used to hit the other stone that's being reduced. Now, hammer stones don't just have to be stones. They can be a number of things. Beyond just stones, hammer stones can also be antlers. A lot of the times they're elk or deer antlers. And each of these kinds of hammer stones give different flake patterns, meaning that different kinds of tools can be created using different kinds of hammer stones. However, there is something very important to bear in mind about hammer stones, regardless of what kind of material they are. Whatever part of the hammer stone you're using to reduce what is soon to be your tool has to be rounded. This is because it helps to create very, very distinct flake patterns, whereas sharp edges would probably just crush the stone that you're trying to reduce. A lot of modern flint nappers use obsidian as the stone that they're trying to reduce. This is because obsidian is relatively easy to break and it breaks in a relatively uniform pattern. This means that they can get blades in very uniform ways and that the stone will break in the way that they want it to. Now, stones and blades are going to be produced in different ways depending upon the hammer stone that is used, the force that is used, the angle that is used by the hammer stone, the thickness of the stone that's being reduced, and the angle of the stone that's being reduced. Now, there are a lot of modern flint nappers, but not many of them do it for the same reason that ancient people did it. Ancient people did it because it was one of the easiest ways to create tools. And many, many tools were created this way. Arrowheads, both notched and non-notched. Knives, some bolts for things such as atlatls. Axe blades, and flake tools, tools which have had parts flaked off to create sharp edges. Modern flint nappers usually do it as a hobby. And modern flint nappers and anthropologists are still learning a lot about ancient flint nappers. Anthropologists try to reverse engineer a lot of the tools that were created by ancient people, trying to figure out what they might have used to create each of these individual tools. Flint nappers, both modern and ancient, can create very large and very small tools. Take Elmerie Coons, for example. These are some examples of Elmerie's work. Elmery started flint napping when he was at the tender age of five years old, which is not something that most of us should do. Because Kuhn started so young, he's had a lot of experience, 38 years of experience at this point, and because of that, he can do some very, very intricate pieces. As you can see, he flint naps axe heads, arrow heads, among other just decorational pieces. Moreover, he'll flint nap very, very large pieces, which could have been used as large weapons or as axe blades in ancient times. This is Harry Oda. He's a master flint napper. He's doing a demonstration to show the people filming exactly what flint napping is like. Earlier in the video, he explains that once you get your piece that you want to reduce, you should look at it and try and decide what kind of tool you want to make it. The entire video will be linked in the description below, this will just be a small segment of it. Notice that Harry is working without gloves. A lot of master flint nappers do this, and it's another reason that flint napping can be so dangerous. It requires a lot of dexterity, and one wrong move can lead to broken fingers or hands. Now as Harry begins to reduce this piece more and more, he begins to get a better idea of where his edges are going to be, and so he can speed up. It's incredible how fast he can make what was once a lump of obsidian into a very, very sharp biface tool. In the video, Harry also explains briefly how angles are important, and how hitting the piece in different places can reduce it in different ways. Harry also demonstrates several other things, like taking pieces that have flaked off and using smaller tools to refine those into things that would be arrowheads or the like. Modern flint napping certainly isn't used for the same things that ancient flint napping was used for, but it appears that it's not going anywhere, and it's an interesting way to reconnect with our ancient ancestors.